Alright, story time. A year ago, I built a gesture controlled vehicle or bot and it was a fully functioning prototype. It looked like shit, but it worked. But before the project could live up to its full lifespan, a kid hit it, it fell like 3 feet, crashed and died. The end. Fast forward to today, and here I am with the same bot looking to get it working and improved. So here is how I actually pimped my robot. First of all, I needed to evaluate the current robot to know what needed to be changed and if it could be revived at all. My first attempt was to plug in the batteries, but it wasn't coming alive. Here are my possible thoughts. 1. The microcontrollers which were on it had been very touchy and I thought the fall could have damaged it finally, because they always acted very wonky, receiving code at one point and not at the next. Secondly, the transceivers. This would have made sense since even if the transmitter module could read values from the sensor, the vehicle would never receive it because it was never successfully sent and I didn't put in any indicators for that. Lastly, overall wiring. Something could have been disconnected in the fall and maybe even the power connections to the motors could have been severed in the fall. Next, I listed the things that must be changed which were the lack of a battery holder and switch which meant yes, I just used these cables, plugged it in and that's how I worked with it. Also, the wiring. I had to neaten up the wiring and make it that I could easily remove and replace the microcontroller and any other components, especially the transceiver, microcontroller and power supply which is practically all of it. With my suspicions on what was wrong and new things to implement, I went right in. Before I proceed, this is for everyone who's whispering and asking, he didn't even explain what the first project was like and how it works. Well, I got you. And if you all betray me and I say put skipping this section in the video analytics, promise you all, you'll be. So what is a gesture controlled bot or vehicle? As implied in the name, it's a vehicle controlled by the gestures. <laughs> Well, seriously, it's a vehicle or board that moves with the gestures of your body. In this case, I said to make it controlled by hand movement. Precisely that of the hand, moving your hand forward, back, twisting it left and twisting it right would essentially control the vehicle corresponding to those movements. Now to achieve this, I need a vehicle which would house the receiver and a transmitter which would be capable of reading changes in hand movements. And for a prototype, after doing some research, I mean typing what I wanted to do in YouTube, I ended up with a design that consisted of the vehicle using an NRF24L01 RF module that could be programmed as a transmitter or receiver. For the transmitter, I used one of the transceivers, a microcontroller with an accelerometer and batteries. While for the vehicle or bot, I used the robot chassis, motor driver, batteries, and that was it. I had the layout for the project. Now we need to address all the faults and flaws we listed earlier. But before we do that, a message from today's sponsor, me. Yes, I put all of my resources into this as a student. If you like what I do and the content I make, why not subscribe and leave a like. To those who are subscribed, I express out thank you and I got a lot more coming that will definitely make it worth it. And yeah, leave a comment on your thoughts about the project and improvements I should implement. And if you have a project idea, drop it I might just do it if it's not too far-fetched or crazy. Now back to it. Starting out, I picked up the robot and I lost the old schematic document so I hopped on Fritzing and used the connections in place to figure out the actual connections, confirming that with the old code I had and I got the correct schematics down for both the receiving robot and the transmitter. Now I forgot to record this while recording the main audio, but well, yeah, here it is. All the different schematics, the circuit diagram and the components I used, I'll put in the description below. If you want to know about my socials and the socials of legends, they will also be in the description. So thanks for all the support and let's get back into it. I proceeded to open up the chassis and clean it up as the chassis was covered in about one year of dust and inactivity. Then I checked on the cables that were powering the motors, removed the connectors that used to hold the battery and I was like, bruh, what was I thinking when I used this? But I was going to replace it now anyway. I got the smallest solderless breadboard I could find and put the Arduino Nano right on it, then got to reworking all the wires. Now some people might say, oh, but why didn't you solder headers and make all the connections on the variable? Call me lazy, I'll accept it, but it's because I mostly use a lot of these parts in other projects. So weighing the stress for a prototype project that I would most likely work on advancing later, I took the easy route. Next, I replaced the disgraceful power cables with the 2S1860 lithium polymer battery holder that would give me an output of 7.4 volts. I attached the power supply to the driver shield as it allowed me to supply 5 volts straight to the Arduino Nano and power it. I also added the power switch between the batteries and the driver, that way it shuts off power completely. After soldering all the necessary wiring, I had created the modified robot, tested it and the real configuration with some sample code and everything seemed in order for now. I moved on to the transmitter and initially decided to mount it on the glove, but plans changed later on as you see. I got my Arduino Nano and mounted it on the smallest solderless breadboard just like on the robot, then I tried arranging the components on the glove and fitting them. 
I made a mouthful that surrounded her by soldering some female hairs to a very board, changing it from how it was, which was being held by wires essentially, like the whole transmitter was. Then I tested the pins for breaches and there was none, so it was good to go. Unlike the previous transmitter, we just had a 9 volt battery. I decided to change that by getting an 1860 lithium polymer cell, which is rechargeable, but the cell only supplies 3.7 volts. So I added a bulk boost converter, which I had laying around, and used it to boost the voltage from 3.7 volts to 5 volts, which was enough for the whole transmitter to work. I hooked it up and it was working. After making all the connections on the breadboard for all the components, I decided to upload the old code I had for this project but unfortunately it wasn't the final working code but it was one of the codes I wrote in development. Disappointing. Writing it wasn't the issue in the end but rather it was the Arduino nanos which were completely refusing to accept any code and that's where the hours of tackling with error after error, uploading bootloaders, checking drivers and all the things I knew how to do started. But finally, I got two of them working and I could read the values of their accelerometer. Stable. X increases. Stable. X. Now came the problem of getting the transmitter and receiver to work. I uploaded the sample code to send simple text and it just wasn't working. After some more testing without the transceiver mount, I found out that one of my transceivers was a dud. So I replaced that and then tried it with the mount and it still wasn't working. Then I dished the mount and it finally worked. Yes, I didn't use a filter capacitor because I didn't initially plan on going for some long range but it could easily just be added. After configuring the wheel orientations and knitting all the wiring, I tried mounting all the electronics on the glove. And I, I often attempted sewing with pink thread because yeah it was all I had. But I figured out that I could just ditch it for a handheld controller and so I did. Using some hot glue I got everything mounted on this small sheet of straw board and voila here's the final pimped up gesture controlled vehicle. Now I went outside, did a bit of a range test and here are the shots from it on the road. For those who made it this far, a special thank you and if you want to see how I made the joystick control robotic arm in record time or a solar tracker system, I'll put the videos up here. See you in the next one.